So it actually started with watching an NFL football game back in January, the game where um, DeMar Hamlin collapsed and ended up suffering cardiac arrest on the field. So that was obviously kind of a, a shocking thing. I just saw a lot of tweets from people that work in medical field and emergency department and everyone agreed like you can't just carry on with the game. So that just kind of got me thinking about what me and my colleagues deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and how we're expected to just carry on with normal business without really able to take time to process all the traumatic things that we see. What I was really surprised to find is that a lot of the articles kind of focus more on frustration that we experience when we have patients that can be difficult to deal with, especially in the emergency department. You know, people are already there, obviously not on their best day, and sometimes that anger and frustration can be placed on the physicians or nurses or any members of the team caring for them. Unfortunately, it, our emotions can impact patient care. If you're seeing a patient that is evoking negative emotions in you like frustration or things like that, you're less likely to go back in and reassess that patient. I feel like I work in an apartment that is very supportive and receptive. We also have good support from the institution as a whole. Most of the studies I've looked at kind of broke it down in three different factors, like system level factors with like, you know, just healthcare in America as a whole, then hospital level factors, and then factors just to the patient themselves. And a lot of the hospital and system level factors had to do with, you know, basically all the big issues we're facing in healthcare now, cost, overcrowding, lack of resources, lack of primary care providers. I feel like the strategy that most healthcare providers employ to a certain extent is compartmentalization. So trying to keep each patient encounter in its own little compartment and not letting it spill into your personal life or values at all. At the end of the day, you only have a limited number of compartments, so you're going to run out and not the best coping mechanism. The ones that have been found in research to be most useful are the cognitive reappraisal. So basically just reframing how you think about a scenario, rechanneling where your emotion lies, rather than focusing on that negative emotion, to focus on the positive emotion, like changing your framework of thinking. We talked a lot about frustration, but also grief in our profession is a big emotion as well, because we do a lot of things that are you know, traumatic, for lack of a better word. And I remember just part of the research I did was talking about how we process that. And the first step to really processing any emotion is first being able to identify that emotion because if you don't know what you're feeling you don't know what to do with that. 